Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to show you my shirt. <laughs> you know, I have said on more than one occasion that I think self-deprecating humor is the best kind of humor. And you can see from my shirts that that's true. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm thankful for every person that watches my videos. And I'm amazed by the growth of my channel. There's nothing else I can say. I mean, I just have to keep thanking you. This is today's first news item. The This is from uh, a man who goes by the name Peter Sweden. And uh, the, the title is Shocking. 50% excess deaths from disease among young people. Although I subscribe to his... Uh, I don't know what you call these. Substack, I guess. Uh... I tend not to share his articles with you very much because I just, uh, I'm put off by his hyperbole. He, everything is shocking and amazing and, and stunning and all this kind of stuff. And it's just, you know, just give me the news. Don't give me all the hyperbole. Okay. And so I tend not to, uh, show a lot of his stuff because it just seems like it's not, not real. Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It's not real journalistic in its content. It's more hyperbolic. But I wanted to point this out because he does provide, provide some statistics and they are interesting. A shocking new statistic from Norway shows that in 2023 there were over 50 percent excess deaths among young people aged 1 to 39 years old now excess death deaths are uh, defined as deaths that are beyond what is normally expected in that age range so uh just for example uh and I'm making these numbers up out of clear blue sky, so they have no meaning at all other than as an illustration. Uh, let's say that in the country of Norway, they expect to have 15,000 deaths of people between the ages of 1 and 39 in a typical year. And uh, those deaths would be distributed among accidents, suicides, overdoses, those kinds of things, uh, disease. You know, uh, statisticians have been tracking uh, mortality statistics for a long time, and they know, in general, a not a precise number, but a kind of a uh, average uh, number of deaths for a specific age group in any specific year. And when those deaths are outside that range, it is cause for further research. It's cause for looking at the numbers and saying what's going on. So, a shocking new statistic from Norway shows that in 2023, there was over 50% excess deaths among young people aged 1 to 39 years old. That means if they normally expected 15,000, what they got was 22,500, which is 50% of that. The figures are very worrying. A 32% increase in cardiovascular deaths, a 51% increase excess deaths from disease, and 36% excess deaths from all causes. The dominating factor among deaths from disease is where things are other symptoms and undefined conditions, undefined conditions, in other words, things that they don't have an answer for, which is weird. Uh, you know, you would expect our modern society to know what someone died from. 
In 2021, Portugal had the highest COVID vaccination rate in the entire world. Earlier this year, they had the highest number of excess deaths in Europe. So what he's attempting to do here is put a correlation between COVID vaccines and excess deaths. And you'd need a lot more data than what he's giving us to know if that's actually the truth. And of course, Researchers are trying to hide that truth, and so it takes a lot of work to try and figure this out. Back in week 49 of 2022, there was a whopping 43.3% more deaths among children aged 0 to 14 in Europe compared with the number during the pandemic from 2020 to mid-2021. So what we can gather from this is that there there is... Uh, there are excess deaths in the data and they are not able to explain them at this time. I'm sure that further research will go on and we hope, we hope that the researchers will be honest and publish their findings and that we'll know eventually what those causes of excess deaths were. No telling if that's true. We'll just have to wait and see. My next article is A Rising Trend of Classical Education Offers Hope for Civic Renewal. This is in the United States. As we celebrate our independence on the 4th of July, Americans would do well to reflect upon what's necessary for a nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal to long endure. A free people requires an education in the civic knowledge and virtues necessary to preserve liberty. Lincoln warned that although no foreign power could conquer us, destruction could come from within if the rule of law were to be replaced by the rule of the mob. According to the Annenberg Public Policy Center's annual survey, one-third, now th these are stunning and terrifying and really disturbing numbers, According to the Annenberg Public Policy Center's annual survey, one-third of American adults cannot name the three branches of government. <laughs> that is mind-boggling to me. You can't name the three branches of government? And 17% can't name any branch at all. The... <laughs> What do you vote for? Likewise, only 5% of Americans could name all five freedoms guaranteed under the First Amendment. 20% couldn't name any. Okay, I don't know that I can name all five. I'd have to stop and think about it. and I'd probably have to go pull the amendment up. But of course, I know freedom of speech and freedom of assembly are two of them. Uh, freedom of worship is a third. Uh, not sure what the other two are. So I'm in that, I'm in the 95%, uh, I guess. Um, but that that doesn't bother me quite as much. You can look that up for crying out loud. But the fact that 17% of the people in America can't even name one branch of our own government a survey earlier this year by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce found that more than 70% of Americans failed a basic test of civic literacy on basic functions of our democracy. Only half correctly identified the branch where bills became laws. A third didn't even know that there are three branches of government. I mean, how... <laughs> How, how is this possible? This is, it's not, you know, the education system is supposed to educate people about this, but you can learn it on your own. My God, you can go on the internet and read the entire constitution for crying out loud. There is no excuse for people being this ignorant other than they just don't care. They just don't care. <sighs> Parents are flocking to classical schools. According to a recent analysis by Arcadia Education, more than 677,500 students attended 1,551 classical schools 
during the 2023-2024 school year. Classical schools are growing at about 5% annually in the last four years alone. More than 260 new, no, I'm sorry. Classical schools are growing at about 5% annually. In the past four years alone, more than 260 new classical schools opened. Arcadia projects that by 2035, more than 1.4 million students will be enrolled in classical schools or receiving a classical education at home. Well, okay, but uh, how many school-aged children are there in the United States? The population is 360 million, so let's say that 10% of those are uh, school-aged children. That's 36 million. 1.4 million is a tiny percentage of that. So the vast majority of students in the U.S. are not being educated on the basics of our country, on what it stands for. What is, you know, what is the difference between democracy and a Republican, constitutional republic government? Probably nobody or very few can answer that question. And that's the reason why you hear all these screams about, oh, they're destroying democracy. Well, we're not a democracy. Hmm. Oh, this stuff just it causes pains in my head. It really does. Oh. And to think that I served my country for six years and these people don't even care. <sighs> my next article is from Cheryl Atkinson. Uh, <clears throat> the title of it is The U.S. Swine Flu Epidemic That Wasn't. And this is an interesting and disturbing article. In July of 2009, amid the national swine flu panic stoked by the CDC, I got two tips from insiders. The CDC had instructed hospitals and states to stop testing for swine flu. Doctors were to presume that any patient who came in with the flu-like symptoms had swine flu or H1N1 and treat them as such without testing them to confirm it. Does that seem right to you? The CDC's official rationale for stopping tests uh, was that the swine flu had supposedly become so widespread it was reasonable to save money on tests and just assume everyone who caught something that looked like any sort of flu had the H1N1 variety. My sources were suspicious. So this launched Cheryl on a year-long investigation took her a year to get this information. She asked for the information from the federal government. They refused to give it. They told her to go through FOIA. And by her own experience, she knew that using FOIA can take up to 10 years to get answers. So instead of waiting for that, she decided she'd just go ask the states for the data. And the states, some of the states were willing to give her the data. Others balked and stalled, and she had to look at various state FOIA laws and remind the state health officials that they were required to produce the information. <laughs> Once I had the state's data in hand, it was easy to see the big story. There was no swine flu pandemic, at least in the U.S. The people tested for swine flu or H1N1 prior to the CDC ordering a halt were patients deemed most likely to have swine flu based on factors like recent travel to places that had a lot of swine flu at the time. Those specimens, my sources explained, should be nearly 100% swine flu if the CDC were correct in its assumptions about how widespread the virus was in the U.S. Yet the majority of the specimens weren't swine flu at all. I built a television news report giving the results of my investigation, had the story legally approved by my CBS net lawyers, and it was set for air. A top executive at CBS News commended me, commented to me, that it was the most original reporting on swine flu that he'd seen done by any news organization. The story never aired. And that, my friends, is how the media lies to you. That's one of the ways that they lie to you, by just not even bothering to ever tell you to begin with. They just don't tell you. 
Now, do you have a right to know? Yes. Should you be told? Yes. Are they going to tell you? No. That's how the media works. They'll tell you what they want you to hear, and they'll tell you what they want you to hear, but they will not tell you what you need to hear. Finally, I have this article. They're undermining civilization. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, this, this is a, uh, a video that you can watch. It's only 15 minutes long, uh, but this is kind of a, a sort of a transcript of it. And you can watch it, you can read it, you can do both, up to you. I think we can all agree that America has some really big problems. The number of Americans dying every year from drug poisonings or drug overdoses has gone from 20,000 in the year 2000 to over 112,000 last year. That's 50% more than the total number of Americans who died in the Vietnam War. And he, you can see the graph. It's been growing steadily and rising constantly, and it's skyrocketed in the last four years. The number of people crossing our border illegally has quadrupled since 2020. Isn't that interesting? Don't know if there's a correlation there, but at the same time that drug deaths started skyrocketing, as you can see, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, <laughs> illegal immigration jumped. And the percentage of students who are chronically absent from school rose from 15 to 25 percent between 2019 and last year. In the big states of California, Florida, and New York, it's 30 percent or higher. I agree that just enforcing these laws is not good enough. I, I suggest you read the whole article. I'm just giving you excerpts. I agree that just enforcing these laws is not good enough. We've got to deal with the underlying causes of the chronic student absenteeism. We've got to have a functioning mental health care system in our country so people who are suffering from substance use disorder can get the help that they need. And we need national unity in dealing with immigration. But not enforcing these laws means that we don't ever get to these solutions. And enforcing them is the first step towards getting kids back into school and on the right track. Addicts often require the threat of jail and coercion to get clean. And we can see with the border crisis that you need to enforce the laws for legal immigration to mean anything. As you can see, this is a lengthy article. A lot of good data in here telling you about what's going on and why it's happening and what the causes are. Obviously, I'm not going to read all this to you. I'm not going to go through that with you. But I give you the links, so you have the ability to read this if you want. So that's the news for today. Uh, I try to find things that you probably would be unaware of things that you might not have heard about and bring them to you so that you can find out about them and I pray for you that God will bless your life with abundance and health and longevity and that he will keep you safe from harm and more than anything that he will bring you peace of mind I pray you'll do the same for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet out.